So Hare Krishna, dear devotee. So today we read from the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. I have two here. <laughs> so it is on canto three, um, which is entitled The Status Quo. C chapter 26 and text 53. Okay, so we do word by word and then we will read, okay? Hiranmayat, golden, undercoshat, undercoshat, from the egg, utaya, arising, salil, sorry, salili, salili, on the water. Shayat, lying, tam, in it, avisha, having entered, Mahadeva, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bahuda, in many ways, Nirbibeda, Nirbibeda. Divided. Come. Apertures. Apertures. I think they also later um, divided into departments. Okay. So line by line. Hiranmaya danda koshad. Hiranmaya danda koshad. Utaya shalile shayat. Utaya shali yeshayat tamavisha mahadevo Bahuda nir pipedakam Hiran mayad under koshat Hiran mayad under koshat Utaya sali leshayat Taya sali leshayat tamavisha mahadevo Tama Visha Mahadevo Bahuta near Pipedakam Huda near Pipedakam Hiran Mayad and under Koshad Udani bipeda kam. Run my yard and uncoshed. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Virat Purasha, situated himself in that golden egg which was lying on the water, and he divided it into many departments. This uh, verse has no um, purport by Srila Prabhupada, so we'll go to the next one, text 54. Nirabida yatsha pratamam mukam vani tato bavat vanya vani atona se brahmnoti grahana eto yaha. Translation. First of all, this is quite a graphic one, so those who can have a creative mind, please try to imagine this. First of all, a mouth appeared in him, and then came forth the organ of speech and with it the god of fire, 
the deity who presides over that organ. Then a pair of nostrils appeared, and in them appeared the olfactory sense as well as prana, the vital air. With the manifestation of speech, fire also became manifested. And with the manifestation of nostrils, the vital air, the breathing process and the sense of smell also became manifested. Okay. Before I begin, Om Gyan Thamaran Jitra Gyanana Salakka Ya Chukshun Sanyana Jasna Shukurvela Shri Chaitanya Mani Tasna Shukurvela Nathalya Swayam Rupa Kadamayana Bhutishu Om Shri Chukshna Chaitanya Guru Nanda Shri Kita Kadare Shri Sakti Guru Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So once more the two verses. Text 53. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Virat Purusha, situated himself in that golden egg which was lying on the water and he divided it into many departments. Text 54. First of all, a mouth appeared in him, and then came forth the organ of speech, and with it the god of fire, the deity who presides over that organ. Then a pair of nostrils appeared, and in them appeared the olfactory sense, as well as prana, the vital air. Oh, Krishna. Oh, baby G. So, thank you very much for coming to the class. <laughs> today. Today we talk about the theme, um, let's talk about God. So that was the theme today because generally um, it is so that us ladies are a little bit shy in class. And if any of you, apart from baby G, if any of you, oh she hurt herself. If any of you um, were there for Mahavishnu Swami's class last week, I was there at the back. And um, at one moment, he asked the ladies a question, yeah? And all the ladies sat there a bit frozen. I'm sure at least half of you knew the answer. But we're sort of used to sort of like sitting there, like, and a and little bit shy to speak about something. So therefore, um, one of the reasons of these classes is to make them a little bit interactive. The point is not that we have to be so vocal in a class, but more that we don't stop having that inner dialogue within uh, what's happening within us uh. so so if you most of you are long time in the movement or you're born maybe into this way you had it for a long part of your life um, then there's also a point <laughs> that you also have to keep going in spiritual life right you have to keep wondering what's happening okay Toshni sit with her somewhere I'm getting distracted today sorry sorry just a little bit tired so I then <laughs> She's too beautiful to ignore, huh? that's the point. Huh? <laughs> so, on this first, huh? text 54, so we have um, a mouth, huh? then comes the organ of speech, uh, with it the god of fire. Yes, so, okay, and that's for some people a little bit of you unusual organ of speech huh? so we talk yeah so i was speaking the god of fire huh? residing in that speech and in the purple trilla Prabhupada also mentions that too with the manifestation of speech comes also fire now um one point of these um this chapter is called fundamental principles of material nature and it is very um, precise, very much into detail. I don't know if any, when you start to read or come to the classes, it talks very much about the senses, and you know, so like, and I have to say sometimes a little bit whoosh, like a little bit over my head here, yeah, what's going on here? <laughs> Yesterday I was listening to a lecture by Srila Prabhupada. He spoke about the beginning, at the beginning of this chapter. He spoke that in the Shastra, Krishna, this Vedic, Knowledge is exact knowledge. It's exact information over how the world really functions. I don't know if it was Namasharanya. One time I walked into this room 
and you were doing your homework, I think. Was it you and you were doing physics? Was it physics or something? Can't, yeah. And um, when I was 16, we had to do a physics class, but we, they thought we were a little bit bright, so they gave us extended physics, like the next level. And I remember sitting there and thinking, oh my, my, what are they talking about here? And more and more, and yes, and the velocity and this angle and the frequency and this. And can you now draw a draw diagram over it? I was like, really, like, what do they want? You know, like, what is it that you want me to understand? And sort of, I don't know about you at that age, one doesn't say so much, like, I have no idea what you're talking about. You sort of go, uh -huh, mm, okay, let's give it a go, let's try. Sometimes I feel like this about spiritual life as well. When I was in my mid-twenties, we had quite a senior devotee. One of the girls, we're all in our twenties, invited him to the home. And he was um, to give us some advice of how we should speak about Bhagavad Gita. So we had to give him some prashadam and this. And he, he gave us lots of inf uh, like typed information. And then he said, oh, you just have to get down and talk about, you know, get a talk about the topic. And I don't know, we were all like working girls, so we studied, we could. <laughs> oh, yeah, talk about God. Huh? Surprised you didn't put a gopi dress on today. It's done that before, you know. It's like, oh, to attend class. Sorry. The husband gives some inspiration sometimes. So, so let's talk about God. So we, so he went away. And then we try to arrange a Sangha, Bhagavad Gita class, all of us in our 20s, you know, quite young, or, you know, thought, okay. Then we sat there and we read the verse, and the people were like, aha, uh -huh. okay, so Krishna, aha, uh -huh, yeah, he's talking about the universal form, yeah, taste in water, mm hmm, yeah, nice. And then the next person repeated another part that was in the translation, and then we went, aha, uh -huh. okay, nice. And we put it away and took prasadam and then went on into our other conversations, so which were much more comfortable. You know, and it was, it's like this sometimes. So if at some stage we haven't learned to talk about God, we then revert back to talking what's natural to us. It's like um, your English is quite good, for example, in yeah. But if you probably, I'm not saying this, but probably if you have a choice to speak to me, or a fluent person in Ukraine language, you speak to this person. Huh? It's natural. It's like a natural process. That's why, you know, between me and my husband, we only speak English after 10 years of marriage. <laughs> it's just natural. Yes. <laughs> yes, I had to go to German class. So, I wanted to open this topic up. Then how do we talk about God? We have... We have that fire is manifested and also a nectar of instruction. It tol tells us about controlling the speech. Yeah, then we hear also that we should just hear words about Krishna. But I wanted to open this topic out because I thought, let's figure this out. Let's figure this out together, huh? how we talk about God. And we have some seniors in the room that can help us today. <laughs> okay. So, okay, maybe I'll go on this side because we need this for something else later. Can someone give me um, a certain way of how we can talk to God? Praying. Praying. Very good. Praying or Vandanam. Praying. Okay, something else. How can we also pray? Beaten, beaten, yeah. Another way, how can we? Something that you like to do. Huh? Kirtan. Kirtan. Shravan. So, yeah, we go on the This kirtan, this singing. It is our call out to the Lord, a huh? call out to God. So, um, yeah, okay. Sorry. 
strategy at the back? How can we talk to God? No man? Aha, to praise him. I think she means to praise him. Praise or glorify. Japa. Yeah, like Japa is our individual part. Some people will say when you do Japa, the main point um, just to hear the mantra. When you go deeper into it, then you understand that the, the chanting of the Japa is also a prayer, huh? a call out for service and also a prayer. So yes, that's definitely a point. Praying here. There's um, a nice book that's just on this topic, praying. We have the prayers from the acharyas that we often use other things, but there's also a part of individual praying. Huh? With the Christians, there's a, a famous sort of book called Conversations with God. I don't know if any of you have heard of it, but it's this element, there is a sort of dialogue huh, that goes on, that it's um, a part and process of our life. <coughs> Many of us speak to God I don't know if I can actually sit anymore. Many of us speak to God um, within our thoughts. It may not be exactly a prayer, but it still goes on. Sometimes it may be like, why you did this? Why did this? Thank you that you come. Now we can talk to him directly. <laughs> so um, in this element, I, I still think that we can, so we can pray to him, but often the prayers might be for us, you know? Like, please, can you help me with this or this? Huh? We do the chanting, <coughs> but often our minds might be a bit distracted, sometimes. <laughs> a little bit. <coughs> and we can glorify him, which happens at some point. And one exercise I also thought we would try today is um, which is why I wanted that you have some sort of books around. Can can you do you have something to read on your phone? I'm showing you. Maybe you and um, God, I just said you and um, uh, Damayanti can share. No fighting over what you like to read. Maybe there's a book from Srila Prabhupada that you can share. And we just do an exercise of around eight minutes long, where well, I want you to read until you find a point. Oh, that's a bit difficult for you. Normally we read and then we can put up this where it makes sense, but you just have to, or maybe you can highlight it, or there's sometimes a function where you can highlight it, yeah? So a point which strikes you, so something which is something um, out of the ordinary. Like it could have been for this last verse about, okay, what's this story about the egg? It could be something, I don't understand it. It could be more something that really inspires you, the dimensions of different air, fire, sky, ego. It could be anything. So you could choose whatever book you like or Srila Prabhupada. It doesn't have to be um, the Srim Bhagavatam in this context. So, Kishore Konishwala Scott's Übersetzung für dich. Wir machen ein kurz acht Minuten lang mit Lesen, Übungen. Es gibt viele deutsche Bücher dann auf da. Auf oh, du hast da. Und dann, wir machen, wenn du liest, du machst etwas, das, uh, that strikes you somehow in the, in the, in, etwas, das, um, ist es Besonderes? Du kriegst ein bisschen von diesem. We are reading, so we, yes, please. We are reading 
and you're reading until something of interest stops you. Could be many different things, anything, you know, hopefully it's at least one thing, but it could be many different things. Just give yourself some time. If it's not interesting, just keep going. That's why I say choose something that you maybe like to read or somehow it's, you know, it could be like Krishna book or, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Krishna's flute in the background. So you, so Amira, for your translate, yeah, you're just reading until something that, yeah, just it's okay. That's interesting. That's funny. That's quite deep. That I don't understand. Any online viewers, it's also a nice exercise. We're like somehow in association. Please just take a book in the near and, and read, and where you can mark it in some way. You may read something quite simple, but you might think, oh, this is something nice to meditate upon. Maybe it's Krishna's flute. Maybe it's some um, part of devotion.
another three, four minutes. Slowly, last minute, please, and we come to a slow motion. Krishna will <coughs> slowly come back together. Some of you look quite absorbed in your reading. Uh, Kishore Kund um, has to wait first as the inter side of Krishna is reading. I just ask Kishore Kund because she doesn't have a translator at the moment. Huh? A bit louder. Have you just so Liz and Danda? Yeah, Liz, that's I you just also to read it's something about the embryo. No, it's okay. Um, so uh, Kishori Kun was speaking of how interesting she reads a part in Shri Bhagavatam about the embryo in the womb and how it's the Inviklung, the Inviklung also, yeah, how it's developing huh, in the in the womb of the mother. So we have embryo. Amira, did uh, Mataji also? Mataji, did she find something interesting that she can? Okay. <laughs> sufficient intelligence. Huh? The Lord gives sufficient intelligence. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> he, sufficient. Is it the word sufficient intelligence? So you understand, you understand, Damian, do you understand this word sufficient? What is in Ukraine for sufficient? Yeah, so it's like, uh, it doesn't mean lots of intelligence, it's just enough, huh? Just enough. Sufficient. Okay. Give sufficient. Okay. How does she mean? How is God sim how are we similar to God? Oh, we sind oh so to me later. So Kishore kun sie hat gesagt hier, Amira hat gesagt, um dass sie hat gelesen, dass um die die Hirn gibt uns um genug intelligence. Und sie hat gezweifelt, wirklich habe ich genug intelligence. Und in Mathe G hier sind wir immer in Verbindung mit Gott und dass wir sind ähnlich zum Gott. Und ich habe nur gerade gefragt, wie sind wir ähnlich? In der Bibel ist es etwas, wie wir in der Form von Gott sind. You know, like that we have hands and eyes and like this, huh? like in the form, huh? It's an interesting point. Um, for Bhakti Shastri, one time I wrote an essay which was um, uh, why is God really in the form of a person? Huh? So we used also Christian parts and ours also. We, we could also be aliens compared to God. Huh? We could be something completely different. God be, could be. So it is interesting that we are similar, huh? similar to the form of God. Damayan, did you have something that came up? Uh, yeah, I think that I read Krishna book. Krishna book, nice. What was this last thing that she said? You can see nothing. What did you say? Only you, huh? Yes. So like this. Namashramya.
Shemania. He said no. What? He said no. So someone dared to say no to the Lord. Is she beset the what man? I just translate for Kishore Kunt. So Kishore Kunt, my leader. So um, for the antwort to this question, we are similar to God. Had the Maharaji said, for example, we read about a mouth and eyes and a form. So our form is similar to God. And then, oh, you are back. <laughs> and then. Um, Damayanti hat gesprochen über diese Lila. Sie lesen irgendwo vom Krishna-Buch, aber ein Krüder. Und sie gehen zu meinem Schwimmplatz. Und ich denke, Krishna hat irgendwo gefragt, ähm, hast du das schöne Sache der Landwirtschaft gesehen? Und hat gesagt, ja, ich habe nicht gesagt. Ich sehe nur dich, Krishna. Und in Namaschani hat ähm, gesprochen über diese Punkte, wo die ähm, Bewohner ähm, hat Krishna und Balaram gesehen. Und sie war nur total ekstatisch und glücklich, nur dass sie haben den äh, die Herrn gesehen und dann auch kein bisschen geht mit der de Wascher, Waschermann, wie heißt der Waschermann? Der Waschperson, die de Person, das wascht die Kleidung später und er hat Nein zum Krishna gesagt. Ja? Das war auch kein Stück. So, this thing, okay, why was this interesting for you that he said no, that the Waschermann said no? I didn't know who was Krishna. Is it sometimes in our life that we also say no to Krishna? Sometimes, huh? Sometimes we say no. It's also interesting. It's not that we say no directly, not those who in turn we say no, look, I won't do that bit of service, or I won't read now, or I won't. You're like, no, I'm not going to do it. Oh, I'm not going to go, no. And um, us younger ones, at least, nothing will okay. <laughs> You know, some element of us can relate to this. So, and also this idea, imagine every day when we see Lord Nishinga, that level of happy, ecstatic part of what you see when 500 people come. Huh? You see their faces. So, when you go to a new temple, <gasps> like, wow, Nishinga Dev. I mean, I have to say that on, for example, Nishinga Chidodasi, <coughs> the Lord, many people said he was extra vibrant. Huh? He was totally vibrant. But on other days, I do think that during festival times, we just have a raised consciousness. Huh? There's a little bit more, okay, I'm more open to this moment. Day-to-day -day life kicks in, and we're like, oh, but I'm tired. How do you want me to be happy? How do we want to be ecstatic? But you see how the gurus, oh, they, they seem imma, very, very, imma. <laughs> they seem always so peaceful. And happy, and also many of the older devotees here, they, they look quite content huh? because the thoughts are somehow there in on Krishna. Sometimes I feel like I sometimes have like a teenage period in spiritual life. You know, this is a period where you say no, <laughs> no, you know, like <laughs> really, like come on, like no. It's an element where, um, I mean, I'm not the only one, but like where where we. So there's an element in our uh, daily lives where the element of speech um, sort of doesn't quite reach Krishna. But we just proved that all of this conversation that we just had was in and around Krishna. 
when we directly glorify him in a past time, it's good, but normally it, it you know, leads us to the next conversation. It may be interesting, I'm not sure, like a conversation, just, I just put it out there. What happens when we say no to Krishna? You know, like why or what? And sometimes it can lead to a deeper conversation where you may feel more fulfilled into going, you know, like afterwards, like, oh, okay, say no. You may also, on this point of being happy or dharma I see only Krishna, you may think, oh, what would it be like if that was it? Could only say Krishna. It's not quite the same, but when I'm in the temple a lot and I go outside, when I see somebody and they say hello, I sometimes I just say, Hare Krishna. I'm just used to Hare Krishna. And they don't look anything like I said anything weird. I'm just, okay, Hare Krishna, like this. Huh? And then, I, and then I'm then i like, did he just say Balaram? Did he, are you just, just words. Somehow the consciousness is nicely tainted with these things from the Lord. Huh? It's just a natural process of, of where, we, where we take ourselves in spiritual life. As Amanda G's form at the back, um, we um, somehow we have a similar form to the Lord. That's a very interesting point. It's a very interesting point because when one delves deeper into the idea that we're not in the form of an animal or a horse or something which is different to the Lord, um, we have a similar form. One goes deeper and understands that we were given this human form of life for God consciousness, right? To go into it. I'm sure Mataji has more deeper thoughts there. I always forget the name, sorry. <laughs> like a, you know, like of where one goes and enters into this topic. But they're just beginning thoughts and phrases. Nandimukhi was pulled out at the, at the time. But any time you go to Nandimukhi, you tell, us, um, tell me something about Nishinga there. There's always something that she... She can say, she has many stories. You just have to ask. We're always a little bit shy sometimes, but there's always something that enters into our world. One of my things that I liked, which often I meditate on, is Krishna is just like the sun, and Maya is just like darkness. If the sun is present, there is no question of darkness. Sometimes I feel like in spiritual life, and often the, the ladies who've spoken to me over the years, <coughs> we speak often of the dark moments in our lives. So they may be something small or something quite deep, but the, the dark moments are where, <coughs> at that moment, if someone goes, you're in Maya, we're like, <laughs> that doesn't help me now. Please don't say that. Although there's a point of it. And I meditate not on that, mo that element anymore, but the fact that there is a sun and sometimes I'm sitting under the clouds. But the sun comes at some point, and that always gives me some hope. Um, one element, the final point that I wanted to speak about, because this verse talks about um, the manifestation of speech and also of fire. Often it comes up with us ladies. Huh? This like, da 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 who we talk, don't we talk, what we talk. So we just did an exercise of how we speak about Krishna. I also have a moment where I'm very happily reading different exercises. Um, please close the door. Um, the different exercises from Mahatma Prabhu. And he speaks often about um, this element of, of dealing with ourselves as devotees and how we are. This element also of anger. So here in the Nectar of Instruction, it says, anger can be controlled. We cannot stop anger altogether. But if we simply become angry with those who blaspheme the Lord or devotees, we control our anger in Krishna consciousness. So later on it describes as examples Hanuman, and it goes to save, and also Arjuna. And this is an element there when we have our controlling our tongue, so to say, or controlling our speech. He speaks of this, Mahatma Prabhu speaks of this ele um, important element. It's not mm, sort of okay in our tradition just to go and yell at somebody. <laughs> just say, Wah, what did you do? What happened? How does it go? Huh? Because this often causes offense for somebody to be a little bit unsettled. On the other side, he spoke when we swallow the anger, we can also lead to um, sickness, huh? that it's, it's swallowed inside. 
and later on one uh, if you go into metaphysical science people will say that depression is uh, repressed anger sort of sort of held back and what do we do so on one side we have not letting it out not saying it on the other side don't swallow it in then what do we do with it what happens what do we do and this is the part where where friends or just a few people that you can speak to maybe come up into the conversation. Somebody where you can say, for example, I'm feeling very frustrated. Um, it's nothing to do with you, but I need someone to talk to. So this person already knows, okay? Don't take it personally, huh? because this energy comes up. And then you let this all, and it's much better to speak to someone who's not connected with whatever you're angry at. And then you let it out. <laughs> and often it can help one process what's going on, what's happening. If you're a very private person or like this, it may just help to write about the thing. So, so it's another form of speech. You, you convert it into written word and you can speak to somebody over it over time. But there's an element where in our spiritual life, a balance where we're not holding in all the things that somehow disturb us and someone else, how are you? And like, oh, hi, good like this, I know that everything is the most terrible <laughs> thing on the planet uh, for the next however long years. So some sort of balance uh, where we find our days. Some days we will have great days in spiritual life. Some days we will have trying times, but just to get that balance. And after some point, I think if we get that to speak about Krishna goes really into the depths of understanding also our own evolution in connection to Krishna. Like, okay, why can't I say no? Or why can't I see Krishna? all the time, it can lead us to the next step. Okay, I'm gonna sing for Krishna now. And maybe he will appear in the holy name, huh? like this. Any questions? I'm not sure I see thoughts are going on inside. Huh? It's very nice if you read something today that you just try to meditate on it. Because the point of reading personally, um, and not that I just read something, is that it will have more significance for your own self and your own consciousness. And when we give ourselves time to meditate on the things that make some sense to us, it can go much deeper sometimes. So, yeah. I hope that will somehow, some we call in English food for thought, yeah? some sort of that we uh, feed something and then it processes like this off. How are we speaking to God? <laughs> it's okay? No, sorry. I I finish ahead of time. It's also very interesting how everybody has a different perspective. Huh? Do you find that huh? about the perception like this? A mirror on the intelligence. On the intelligence is a very funny question because this word sufficient is very interesting. Why is it interesting? Because you think, no, it's not enough. You have sufficient intelligence to be here, Amira. You have sufficient intelligence to question what you read. You have sufficient intelligence to to think, okay, hang on a minute, what does it even mean, sufficient intelligence? Like, come on, what does it mean? But it's already there, you know? So... Let me see darkness. There was even some, um, I think such nun Swami, pointed out that a bad thought takes seven times more, I'm sorry if I misquote, but many more times than a good thought. So you could have a whole day, good, do, 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 do. one bad meeting, one bad words, that's it, gone. And us ladies, we're like even more. Somehow the problems can be a bit more... They have a defense mechanism, well, somehow, where they stop, but for, um, in... And the worst is when it's eat, it's like eating away, huh? This all da, 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 da. And it's like this, shifting it away. When you think of this word, Krishna is the sun and Maya is the darkness, and you're like, I'm in Maya, I'm in Maya. And it's stop. The sun is out there. Krishna, please help me find the sun. This is a point of the prayer. Many times in the last year, especially after it got quite sick, it was like, <coughs> the thoughts were more gloom and doom, huh? With corona and everything going on. It's heavy, huh? The war, you know, every, it's easy to get in this um, dark spot. On the other side, when you read books, for example, Salted Bread, and uh, you see 
that devotees found some way through it. Eh? They, they searched and they searched harder for Krishna. And in that way, that's our point, right? To surrender. Let's go over. Krishna, bring me out. Amira, you know, if you say, you say, Krishna, there is sufficient intelligence. Please show me where I have sufficient intelligence. Please, Krishna. I don't see it personally. It's also humble, but you know, and he'll show you. I have at least a handful of examples I'll show you where I came, like, a little bit foolishly and said, well, it says this in the book, but I don't really, I don't know if I really believe it, but please prove it if it's meant to be like this. And he, he proved it. I can tell you one story if you want to really hear this. Otherwise, you want to hear this story? So, uh, Charu, um, yeah, he comes with the Iti greeting. And when he was four or so, so some years back, he said, but Mama, if Nishingadev is like really here, how comes he doesn't stand up and come out? You know, how comes it's like he doesn't stand up and come out? And in that moment, I didn't have a proper answer for him. So I went to the Lord and said, <coughs> Adina Shingadev, my little boy asked me this question. <coughs> how Can you somehow show how you are, are present um, in your form? You know, to ha how can I explain this to him? And on this day was um, children's camp and we had Ratha Yatra. And this year, somehow, we felt the energy was somehow a little off. And we changed what we wanted to do. And at the beginning, I think Ramananda gave a big speech on what was Rafa Yatra and said, come, this is your cart, kids. We have a, a cart that's about like this big. Well, the wheel is like this big, so it's quite high. And the kids cleaned up the cart. They all made flower garlands. They put them on themselves. They were really like, you know, it was like, let them take over. And then it started raining. Like heavy rain, heavy, heavy rain. And we're like, okay, whatever. But it's, it's going to happen. The kids are inspired. They'll have this. And then, then we thought, okay, let's just do the Rafiatra. The rain has, has, has slowed down a little bit, but uh, it's still going. So we did the Rafiatra. And the, the floor maybe was a bit slippery. So we were going around. We're going around this corner. I still remember. And Ramananda was in front of Charu, was behind Charu. And somehow the, the cart went very fast around the corner and Charu fell down. And his whole leg um, went over one of the wheels. The, the wheel went over his leg, sorry. Ramananda stopped the second wheel from going over. And, um, and it, it's, a, it's a huge metal wheel that's like made like, I don't know, an animal can say how old it is, maybe 20, you know, old sort of iron, a huge wheel. And the doctor was there, our doctor Jagadish was Johannes at the time. And we carried our sort of screaming charu away, he was in the pain of compression. And the doctor told us such a young boy, normally they would have to call a helicopter. Because it, he's, you know, we saw that the wheel went over, he's in pain. It's normally, you know, a, a big thing for, for a small child. We put him down and, you know, I gave him the usual homeopathic stuff and, you know, the I put on a small cartoon to distract him. He was very happy about this. One of his friends came to visit him. And um, he seemed to be okay. Like, he cried for two seconds, but actually he was crying more about his umbrella. Somehow he dropped his umbrella, and we gave him, he was like, so in the house he stopped crying. And then he, we were giving him prashadam and sitting and, and praying. And I couldn't quite understand, like, hang on a minute, everything was so nice, and the kids put so much endeavor, how, like, you know, probably broken his leg. or. And every two hours, I think, Jagadish came back to check on him. And... Charu was okay. He was telling me he was in, it was in pain, but he was okay. And then the third, second or third time that Jagadish came, he, he told Charu to hop on this leg. I was like, why is he telling him to hop on the broken leg? You know, you know, like what the? But he's a he's a surgeon, huh? He's a surgeon. He's a doctor. And Charu sort of hopped. It was painful. And then the doctor told us, okay, in the night time will be the worst time. It's the compression of the leg, so it normally overnight it gets worse. Be prepared. So he was prepared with everything that went. Charu slept throughout the whole night. The next night, I said, Charu, does it 
hurt? He says, yeah. I said, where does it hurt? And he pointed at the wrong leg. <laughs> I was like, okay. And then, then I tried on the other leg. It was okay. This, and on this day, he, he tried to climb a tree. I said to Jagadish, would it be a miracle if Jaru is okay and he doesn't have to go to hospital? He's like, yes, it would be a miracle. You know, it would really be something. And then later on that day, Charu tried to um, ride a bike, you know, on this leg. His leg was completely fine. It was completely fine. It was quite a... And I remembered then my prayer. Please show how you are present, my Lord. And in the cult of Jagannath, huh, representative, the same as Lord Nishinga Day of the Lord had saved Charu. It was his cart. Charu was okay. We never, we are in Bual, huh? So you see how the Lord reciprocates. This was really a, a story. I don't know if I should share online, but you know, like just to show that our prayers don't go unanswered. We have to. I was like, felt very foolish after that for such a prayer, you know, because I didn't want to be shown so dramatically how the Lord was present. Because, you know, on the uh, uh, external, we did everything. Ramananda was there, I was there, we were taking care, we just couldn't stop. The Lord, the Lord does the rest. And Charu, on that same day, I said, Charu, the doctor also said, it's a miracle, your leg is okay. Should we go and clean up the car? And he came and climbed up and we cleaned it. We cleaned it all off that day. So it was a way he'd understood. And I'd understood, you see, the Lord is present. <laughs> that was a, a little dramatic story at the end. But yeah, Jay Jagannath, huh? Those who go on Rafi Atra, Jane is singing there. In. Huh? We like them with a happy ending. We like them if they have a happy ending. Hap unhappy ending? No, 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 not like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I hear in, in um, Jagannath Puri, they sing the prayer still of Lord Nishinga there because he was previously worshipped down there in, a, in the previous yuga. So they are always singing the Lord. So a very close connection. And then the Mukio, we used to have, used to be Jagannath Baladev Supadra used to come here every year. Huh? They were used to be on this altar for some time. <laughs> yes, nice.